Mobile 3 LCD projector and this is a cup of tea. So let's have a quick swig. Yes, before you you see my uh, Hitachi CP-X328 uh, LCD projector. Built sometime between 2002 and 2005. I actually got this off a wee pile so I got it for free because some institutions just throw stuff out instead of fixing them. Now, uh, we did fire it up and it worked perfectly for 20 hours, but of late it started to develop a small issue. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about that, but uh, it does need repairing eventually. So, I what we basically need to do is repair one of the screens inside, replace it, uh, but you can't get the part number off the internet, so I need to go in there and find out what the part number is. So, I thought while we were in there, we'd do a quick video on servicing them. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on these machines. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever actually been in one. I've done loads of research on it. Uh, so if I'm doing anything wrong, if you have any suggestions on how to do things better, then please leave them in the comments. No nasty snidey remarks, please. Just helpful remarks would be nice. So, when servicing these things, the important things are the optics and the cooling. The cooling fans need to be nice and clean, and so do the optics. First thing I'm going to do with this is take out the filter. Now, on this particular machine, this should be cleaned every 100 hours <coughs> of use. Um, basically, you can see it's pretty dirty. There you go. Basically, you need to dust it off, or even stick it in the sink. See, the dust is coming off. Pretty easy with just rubbing. Well, you can stick it in the sink, give it a good soak, and let it dry for a few days. Do not use it while wet, and uh, put it back in, and. It should run nice and cool. You need to make sure the air is getting in there nice and cool. So now the filter's out, we've got to take the top off. So that's what I'm going to do now. I don't know how it comes off, so I'm going to cut and get it off, and I'll be back in a minute. Right, a short while later, and a scary moment because it got stuck on that side, and we're down past the lid into the main part. Here we can see uh, what I assume, in my naivety, actually, there we go, it comes off too. And my naivety is the power supply, so I'm not going to stick my fingers in there. Uh, the lamp itself at the back here, these are expensive, so unless you need to take that out, <coughs> because, yes, yes, that looks like power supply. Because uh, even on this one, you're talking for a cheap Chinese one, <coughs> a £7, up to around £300 for a genuine one, so. To uh, destroy that, not a good idea. There are some uh, retrofits you can get, you can do, uh, apparently to put uh, car bulbs and stuff like that in, but not going to do that this time. Next job is to remove this and remove this control board so we can get on to the light assembly and the panels I am looking for themselves. So, I'll be right back. Just a quick note before progressing, uh, these actual things sitting here are the three LCD panels which control the image. Uh, they each have a flexi link thing so you need to pull the connector back and release each of the cables before removing this board or else you're going to be very upset. Right, time to get these screws off and get this off. I'll be right back. Right, okay. What I've done, I've removed two uh, cables from the board, just enough to get it to fold over, and you can now see inside. Now this is a filter that was sitting on top of this, with the arms going through. I've now I've removed that, that's to one side. And you can now see the actual, if I pull this away, sorry to turn the battery, so it's on some uh, mains. Uh, you can now see the three LCDs. I don't know which way around these are at the moment, so there we are. And this is the optical chamber, let's say for want of a better word. 
light comes in through the lamp, from the lamp, through here, as reflected by different mirrors in here, onto the polarizers, which polarize the light, do, and then the LCD panels, which are inside here. Now, so what we're going to have to do is open up this uh, optical chamber. I don't know if it's called the optical chamber, but that's why I'm calling it for the purposes of the video. Now, it appears the polarizers are actually connected to the optical chamber, so I don't know if they'll come with it or whether I've got to do them separately. So what I'm going to try and do first is unscrew the chamber and see if they come with it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws by the looks of it, and possibly two connectors there. But I'm going to do the, undo these first six and then see what happens before. Now, uh, we've got to order one of these parts, I think. The serial number may be part of these. And actually, very nice of them, they've actually put little coloured dots on. Let's have a look. There we go. They've put coloured dots on each of the ribbons, so you can actually see. There we go. That's the blue one. That's the green. And that's the red, so this is the one that needs replacing. So let's get into that optical chamber first, because that will give us access to this panel too. Alright, okay, I'll do that and I'll be right back, as I say. Right, it turns out that uh, to get at the uh, LED screens themselves, you don't need to take this part out because they all come out as part of the lens. So. Here's the little buggers themselves, these are what need replacing. And you see the light gets reflected by mirrors, which we get to see, and hits these LCD screens, which allow the light through. So just see stuff through that one. Cool. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so. I don't know if that screen's actually damaged or not. It doesn't look it. Hmm. Get someone to have a look. There you go. So anyway, yes, <laughs> just the polarizer. That's the blue one that's suspect. So it's three there. Uh, that. So I'll put that to one side. Be very careful. Don't damage it. And dust and all that rubbish. And we'll get this top cover off and have a look at the mirrors themselves. Right. With a lot of fighting, uh, we're finally into the optical chamber. Now if I release your bounds, you can see here, the light comes from the uh, lamp over there and gets reflected by these mirrors into each of the LCDs. This uh, mirror here reflects blue light and lets the others through, so that gets whacked by ultraviolet down there. That reflects, where is it, green? Red. That reflects red and lets the green through, and the green goes around here and goes to the last uh, of the screens. Now, they each have polarizers which polarize the light, so you can't see it here because yes, you need an LCD screen to do it against, but this polarizer, which is the, of the blue, can't see on the camera, it's not picking it up, but it definitely has a big area of burning in it so that definitely needs to be replaced so I've blown them out uh, I do admit to being a heathen and actually taking them out and using a glass cleaning cloth because some of them were caked terribly with dirt so you do that at your own risk, but be very gentle if you do do, because you damage the coatings very, very easily. As you can see the damage that in the light there. Uh, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Oh yeah, you can, there you go. Just see the light there, where it's burnt through all the years. There you go, that's what needs replacing. So, yes, going to order a new screen, because the screen's probably shot as well and new polarizer for that. In the meantime, we're going to put it back together and test if, uh, if I can actually put it back together. 
I was going to make a note of that serial number as a model number as well. So, next time you see this, it should be back together and working, hopefully. That's well, she's uh, back together. Uh, that was a bit scary, actually. But, uh, it seems that things in there aren't as precise as I've been led to believe, you know, the lenses and the nose do move around, and you can clean them because, yeah, perfect display. Uh, let's just see if there's any obvious issues here. Just move that out the way, shrink that so we can see. You see, the area that's having issues is blue in the corner of the screen there. Can't see it at the moment. Press the menu. And this one appears. Ah, yeah, might be. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. But the blue. Hmm, uh, it, it appears much better actually. I'm going to test it on Snuggy Cinema downstairs. And uh, yes, we'll be back. Oh, by the way, isn't this pretty? Yeah. Ooh, pretty. Those are a bugger to get back in. So, anyway, we've got our part number. We've cleaned her out. The other thing you can do, I'm going to chicken out today. <laughs> uh, get some compressed air and blow this fan out, which is the cooling fan for the light. You'll need to be blowing that out. So, there you go. Thank you very much. Right, a little bit later here, and here we are in Snuggy Cinema with its setup, and uh, you see it's working fine. So I've not done any damage to the optics. Uh, this is the end of the film. And don't want any sound for obvious reasons, but you can see even in this dark light that there is a blue over there. It's not as pronounced in real life as the camera's picking it up, but that is nice because the camera has to pick it up. There's this blue picture over here on the side. As I said, you can just about see that in real life, but the camera picks it up nicely. Uh, so that is what we're going to repair. But, as you can see, successfully serviced, clean. So if you want to service your own, those are the things you need to be looking at. Optics and cooling. Obviously, don't force anything when you're trying to remove the optics. Or else you're going to break them. And, uh, yes, if you want to clean by hand, which, which I've done, but don't recommend you do, for obvious reasons, uh, use very soft cloth and do not press because you'll damage the coatings. I can see it's quite yellowed, this image. Uh, that's because of the blue. Problems with the blue. So, Hope you enjoyed. Any comments? Any suggestions? And then, uh, yes. Please leave a comment below. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a quick a couple of notes before I go. Yes, my screwdriver is tired. Uh, I did get the obligatory left screw, which I'm going to keep because we're going to take it apart again to put the new thing in. So, keep that to one side. <laughs> and this is, this actually sat on top of the three panels below the motherboard and acted as a filter. But, I think that's a postman come. Our dog is rather loud. Uh, the foam has degraded over the years, so. Yeah, very soft. So I've left that off. I think it would do more damage to put that on than to leave it off, so. That's an executive decision. If any foams like that, you may want to leave them out. Yes. So, thank you very much. I'm glad that worked. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>